Saudi Arabia, a country that is 2.15 million square kilometers, is about 95% desert. The desert extends across the country from the north to the south, and there are many other sandy bodies too. The country is therefore at major risk of drought at times, and it spent more than three decades drilling for water in order to produce enough water for farming, drinking, etc. If the country is to continue growing food in these arid regions, water is an enormously precious resource, and Saudi Arabia is constantly looking for new ways to ensure that enough water is available to farmers and citizens. It has very little rainfall each year and few natural sources of water. Water scarcity in this country is classed as high, which means that it faces droughts on a relatively regular basis. This increases the country's dependency on food imports and makes it particularly vulnerable to climate change issues which could increase water scarcity. The Middle East in general is among the most water-stressed parts of the world, and rapidly rising population levels are putting even more pressure on the water systems. The country has seen a growth of about 790% in just over 60 years, growing from about 4 million people to about 36 million people. With this growth has come an ever greater demand for water. Additionally, the country's dependence on oil production has caused significant pressure on the water supply. This is coupled with massive expansion plans. Saudi Arabia's ambitious 2030 vision is seeing huge construction developments occurring everywhere fueling an even greater need for water, both as part of the construction efforts and in the ongoing infrastructural expansions. With the creation of cities like Neom, the country is likely to see more people living and working here, putting even more pressure on water sources. In the past, Saudi Arabia relied on its local water sources and kept farming small scale. However, as time went on, the government looked to two major sources for their water supplies. Desalinated water taken from the ocean, and ancient water found deep underground, sometimes known as fossil groundwater. Making this shift allowed Saudi Arabia to use water much more freely, but the supply is limited. It had around 500 billion cubic meters of fossil water, but has been drawing around 21 billion of that each year, with only around 2.4 billion being replaced by natural sources. Much of this water has been used up in recent years, meaning that Saudi Arabia must look to upscale its desalination techniques to maintain its existing farmland, let alone consider expanding it. In this context, it's no surprise that Saudi Arabia is looking for solutions, and their artificial river in the desert is one such solution. It's worth pointing pointing out that although it's been termed a river, it's actually an underground pipeline that will transport water to areas where it's needed. There will be no open water on the surface, which isn't surprising when you consider that the river runs through desert regions and would lose a lot of water to evaporation if it was open. The river will span about 12,000 kilometers and its goal is simple, to address water scarcity in the region by utilizing seawater and desalination techniques. There is seawater available and by removing the salt from it, Saudi Arabia has a good chance of increasing its access to potable water, which can be used to supply homes and could revolutionize the country's agricultural system. It's not just about building a canal, this is a vast project that would fundamentally change much of the land in Saudi Arabia, making it arable and allowing the country to massively expand its agricultural capacity. To put the pipework size into context, the length of Saudi Arabia is approximately 1,480 kilometers, while its width is approximately 1,012. The pipework's impressive 12,000 kilometers will therefore spread in an intricate network throughout the landmass, providing a lifeline that could change the future of this country. It is part of Saudi Arabia's larger plan to improve water sustainability and manage its economics better as it moves away from a heavy dependence on oil drilling and attempts to become more self-sufficient. Saudi Arabia is already the top global producer of desalinated water, generating about 1 billion cubic meters every year. This river will significantly increase that number, giving the country far more water than before. As the world as a whole attempts to reduce its dependence on oil in response to climate change initiatives, this shift in focus could be very timely for the country, allowing it to become more self-sufficient as its buying power on the global scale decreases. 
When completed, the river will be one of the largest desalination water networks in the world, capable of producing 9.4 million cubic meters of water every day. According to Saudi news reporter Ahmad al shugairi if the water produced from this project was distributed across the world, they would get two gallons of water every day. With that context, it's clear what an incredible impact this could have on Saudi Arabia's water supply and its ability to farm and increase its food security. The difference this could make in the water-starved region can hardly be overemphasized, both on a local scale and on a national scale. It may also inspire similar projects in nearby nations where water scarcity is also a significant issue to be addressed. The river will be approximately double the length of the Nile once completed. This project is a relatively recent one. It was announced in 2023 and has an estimated cost of $500 billion. It is presumably being funded by the government, although no official statements have been made about this. However, other projects to improve the country's water situation, such as cloud seeding, have been implemented as part of the Saudi Green Initiative, which was launched in March 2021, spearheaded by the Crown Prince, Mohammed bin Salman. The aim of this project is environmental preservation, sustainable development, and the securing of the kingdom's natural water sources. So the artificial river is in keeping with this plan. The plans are still in their early stages, so it's not clear which firms will be involved, but some details about the river have been released. It will make use of anti-corrosion pipes, which will have a diameter of 2.25 meters. Ahmad al shugairi covered the river on the TV series Scene and commented that the use of underground rivers is already essential to the provision of potable water to homes in this desert region. He mentioned that the project will, after a few years, be able to transport fresh water around the area, presumably supplying both homes and agricultural projects. If the project is successful, it could also transform the environment, making land that is currently desert arable, and allowing the country to increase its food production and its stability while decreasing its imports and dependence on other countries. This could have a major impact on the entire region, and underscores the country's stated commitment to improved sustainability and water security. However, the project is currently unparalleled in scale, and will be dependent on advanced desalination technology. With construction not even underway yet, it's not clear what the challenges may be. But construction crews will be working in a difficult, hostile environment, and have an enormously ambitious task to complete. The river will be 11 meters wide, 4 meters deep, and 12,000 kilometers long, meaning that enormous excavation projects will have to be undertaken to lay the pipework. It's necessary to use anti-corrosion pipes as they'll be transporting salt water to the desalination plant. These pipes will need to be engineered with great care to ensure they can withstand the harsh conditions they will be laid in. Desert temperatures are likely to swing rapidly from hot to cold, and the pipes must be capable of withstanding this in the long term. Although they'll be protected from some of the desert's harshest conditions by being buried underground, they're still going to be an incredible feat of engineering. The pipes running under the cities will be more than 126,000 kilometers long, which is three times greater than the circumference of the globe. That gives us some sense of just how vast this project's scale is and the massive materials that will be needed in order to fulfill its requirements. The demand for metal for the pipework alone will be colossal, and the excavation effort to lay this pipework is going to be monumental. Cutting-edge technology will be required to excavate the channels, shoring up the sand and blasting through the rock. The project will also be dependent on geospatial technology to map out the desert accurately, allowing the plan for the pipework to be created. Of course, this is likely to have a significant impact on the environment. It will inevitably cause massive disruption in areas where excavation is carried out. It is crucial for surface disruption to be minimized and advanced tunneling techniques will be employed to maximize preservation. The geospatial technological mapping will help engineers avoid areas that are particularly sensitive, although some disruption is likely to be unavoidable. 
What impact the project will have on the environment in the long term remains to be seen. Its effect on the arability of the land could see dramatic changes to the animals and plants that find their home here. In terms of the energy costs, these are likely to be vast, but the project will be making use of solar and wind energy which are abundant in this country. This will minimize the construction's dependency on fossil fuels and reduce its contribution to global warming. Given the scale of the project, this is pretty significant. It's challenging to predict just how much of a difference this project could make to a country that's been suffering from water shortages for years and is quickly approaching a crisis point. It goes hand in hand with multiple other government initiatives that are attempting to make Saudi Arabia sustainable and environmentally friendly, including their goal to plant 600 million trees by 2030. The water that will be made available by the project will be key to their goal of increasing biodiversity and conservation efforts. Additionally, it will increase the country's self-sufficiency. Currently, Saudi Arabia imports about $3 billion worth of food each year. If it expands its agricultural capacity, it can reduce its imports and will likely see a significant creation of job opportunities as farming land becomes available. No completion date has yet been outlined for the artificial river and it's unclear how much progress has been made as this is a very early stage project. It's one of many attempts to increase water supplies in this arid region, joining Egypt's New Delta project, which will also see the creation of a vast artificial river in the desert, also announced in 2023. Given the ongoing water stress, it's projects like these that can revolutionize arid countries and allow them to thrive in a world with ever-increasing water demands. Excited for more construction wonders? Click the video on your screen to unravel how India is constructing the world's biggest temple in rich historic land. And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button to join our community and stay updated with all our latest wonders. See you there.